So several of you have asked me over the last few months to start sharing with you some of my planning videos and how I sit down and plan our days, weeks, months and years. We are just getting started on the second half of our school year and I sat down yesterday to get my thoughts together of what our weeks would probably look like. I thought, oh, hang on, I'm planning. I'm planning, Kylie. You need to be filming this. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I halted my thoughts from yesterday and I've got all of our resources in front of me sitting here right now. And I'm going to plan out the week so that you can see my thought processes. Not sure how exciting this is going to be, to be honest. Um, but I've got my trusty weekly overview that template that I've done up. This is really, really simple, but that's how I roll here. If it's not simple, I don't use it. Um, it just gets left by the wayside. Anything complicated, I have never, ever stuck with. So I will put this together into a PDF download for you if you'd like your own copy of just this simple weekly overview planner. Stay to the end and I'll let you know how you can get your own copy. So the first thing I always do is grab myself some pens. Sometimes I want to write things in pencil because I'm not sure um, as to how set in stone some items are. And this is just an overview. It doesn't mean that this is how every rig will go. It's just that ideal week I guess you could say. So I've got a pen and a pencil and I've also got three coloured pens. I'm going to fill this out um, with a different colour for each child and then one colour when it's all of us all together. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is pop that at the top of the page. So I'm going to have blue for child one, green for child two and purple for all together activities. Okay, so the first thing I sit and do is think about our definites, the non-changeable activities. Those are the first things that always go into my week. And you'll see here with this overview, there are no times. I've simply got it broken down into morning, midday or middle of the day type activities, afternoon and evening. Those blocks of time just work a little bit better for me. I really uh, am not comfortable putting times on anything unless it is a set appointment time. They're the only things that actually get timed in our day and across our week. So the first thing I need to do is sit and add all of our scheduled appointment times that we already know we definitely have coming up. So I'm just gonna do that now. Okay, so I've done that. I've got all of our fixed events that I know for sure are happening at least in the next three month period. I tend to look at this each school holidays just because some of our extracurricular activities change around, different days, those types of things. And there are still a couple of things that I'm potentially working on as extracurricular activities that aren't yet set in stone. So I just need to keep those in the back of my mind as I'm working through this. So yeah, I've got those added. So we've got, as you can see, we've got math tutoring, Fridays we've got a little co-op happening, lots of singing and drama type extracurricular classes and those types of things. This term we've been invited by Aludo, which is an online science program, to give that their eight week course a try. So we're kind of excited about that. I want to see how that goes. I will um, leave a link to that down below if you wanted to check it out for yourself. Okay, so from there, I now need to look at all of my curriculum and decide how we're gonna do this. How are we gonna fit it all in, basically? So we tend to work in uh, blocks of morning time, independent work, 
and then group work. I already know in my head what is done as morning time, what is completed as independent work and what we all do together as group work. So I don't need to write everything down. I can simply pop in here, whether we're doing a morning block, an independent block or a group work block and how we will fit those in. The other issue that I have is I've added in a couple of extra things this term, just little things that I've been wanting to do for a while. We're gonna do a mini unit on copyright and plagiarism. We're also going to do a mini unit covering the state of Tasmania sometime this term. And then of course, we always have our extra math or our review catch up math that we do as well. So those three particular items are extras on top of everything else that I've decided to try and squeeze into the term and still only do book work for two hours a day, remember that. So I'm not sure how I'm going to go. And So what I think I'll do with those three is loop them, which means I won't do them every day. They'll probably only get to once or twice a week, but rather than saying, I'm going to do our Tasmania unit on Monday and on Tuesdays, we'll do our extra math. So I'll just keep some notes about, okay, so last Tuesday we did extra math. Last week we didn't touch our Tasmania unit at all. We need to look at our Tasmania unit this week. So I just loop through those three making sure that they each get looked at across a week or across a fortnight at least so that we can get through them in a reasonable amount of time. It's what happens when you find all the good things that you want to do on top of what you're already doing. Okay, so now I need to look at the day that I know that we can do our morning time. So our morning time for us basically consists of documentary watching, independent reading and possibly some morning basket um, reading. So I know that on a Monday we can get that done definitely because we have plenty of time. So I've got uh, morning time or I've got morning block. Tuesday we have the math tutor that comes fairly early in the morning and even though we probably technically have time to get morning block in, we rarely do make time to get it in. So I'm going to leave Tuesday blank. Wednesday morning is a morning block. And Thursday morning. And Friday we have our little team co-op group. So we won't be able to get to our morning block on that day. So that's three days a week that we will get to our morning block time. Okay, then we want to move into our independent work. So independent work is basically math, any homework from co-op, any of those sort of things that have been left over, report writing, anything that the kids actually do independently on their own. So once again, we can do, oops, change my pen to the thin tip. We can move to independent, that'll be late morning on a Monday, not on a Tuesday because we're doing math tutoring, on a Wednesday and on a Thursday. So we know we've got three days to fit in any independent work that they need to get done. Then that brings me back to group work. So this group work for us is history, geography, science. Now most of that we're doing with our co-op, but we do have some reading that needs to be done at home together. So this is where I'm lumping group work along with those three other little topics that I mentioned earlier that we will loop through. So if we've done our science and history reading, then we'll do a loop topic and that will either be our mini unit on Tasmania, our mini unit on plagiarism or some fun extra math activities. So we have group work. All right, so just before lunch on a Monday, we will have time for some group work. It'll probably be just after lunch on a Tuesday, which is abnormal for us. We do really try to always be done by lunch. Tuesdays is a little bit of a different day because we have math tutoring and both kids do one hour of tutoring each. And so that tutoring doesn't finish till 12. By the time the tutor packs up and leaves, it's quite often closer to 12.30 and we have some lunch. So early afternoon on a Tuesday, we'll do a small amount of group work. Wednesdays we'll definitely have time for a group block 
and again on Thursdays. So understanding what goes into each of these blocks is a whole other separate planning activity and that's something that I will do prior to my weekly overview. And I will put something out as well as to how I sort the actual curriculum and what we're doing independently, what we're doing as a group and how that's going to work in our days. Okay, so we have our morning block, our independent and our group work all scheduled in the calendar. On a Tuesday though, things are a little bit bare. I've got one child doing math tutoring and the other child not doing anything. So during that time, I'm gonna allocate them some more independent reading time because we haven't really got many slots put in the week for that. And yes, we do allocate reading here for those of you who might be curious about that. So I'm going to allocate independent reading time. And this is also the day of the week that they will do what we've just coined some computer school. So computer school for us is Read Theory, which is an online free reading comprehension program. It's excellent, go check it out. You won't be disappointed. So Read Theory, we started Vocabulary.com last term, so we'll keep that up and see how we go with that. Uh, independent reading and typing. So the kids also do Typing Club as well. So that will happen on a Tuesday whilst and then they'll swap around. So one will be in math, one will be doing those computer school activities and then they'll swap over. So I'm going to pop computer school for my green child. And computer school for my blue child. And really, that is basically our week. This Thursday afternoon time slot that you can see is quite bare. We most likely will have something out of the house. I just haven't completely finalized that yet. But that basically is how I do my weekly overview. So that's it. As I said, it wasn't overly exciting, but that is the basis of our weekly overview, at least for the next three months, the next term ahead. I generally sit down and look at this each school holidays. And this is part of a bigger planning process, really. Um, so I guess the first stage in that planning process is to look at all of the resources that we're going to be using and how we're gonna use those. That's step one, look at what we're going to be doing how we're going to do it. Are we doing it independently? We're we doing it with other people in a co-op. Are we doing small group work here at home? Then I also look at the extracurricular activities that we'll do outside of the home. From there, that is then when I put everything into, is it going to be in our morning block time? Is this going to be independent work? Is this going to be in our group block time? So all of that happens before I put it into our weekly overview. And at some point, I will also do a daily overview schedule video for you as well. But that's it. That's my simple weekly schedule. So as I said in the beginning, if you would like a copy of this really simple PDF download, I will make it available for free over in my Facebook group. That Facebook group is called YouTube's Homeschooling Community. And my dream for this Facebook group is for it to become like being able to visit a homeschooling conference every single day of the week because there is so much information in the world of YouTube put out by amazing knowledgeable other homeschoolers around the world and I think it's a really great resource to tap into and I wish that I had something like that in my early days. So that's the premise of that particular Facebook group. I will pop a link in the description box down below. Jump on over, join the group, grab your free PDF, have a look around, never know, you might find a couple of amazing new channels for you to follow. And that's it. So, I hope this was helpful in some way. For me, I have to be honest, it doesn't feel as though it was helpful. It's just a really simple process that I go through. I do hope that you've been able to take something from this today. And thank you again so much for being here. Until next time, bye for now.